Pinto could get him a crack at the Australian title. Although two kilos overweight, it was a fit-looking Pinto who pulled on the gloves today. In just eight days, the former undefeated champion of Portugal will know whether the months of training have been worth it. But Pinto's preparation has been dogged by personal tragedy with the loss of two members of his family. Two months ago, he was offered a shot at the vacant Australian lightweight title but was forced to decline after the death of his brother. Yeah, we've been blessed with bad luck. We went to a fight, have a fight in um, Brisbane and his father died the night of the fight over there. He's got something to fight for, for sure. His opponent is the highly rated Tony Mad Dog Miller, one of the few boxers to go the distance with Jeff Finnick. Barber is predicting victory, but thinks it will be a tough fight that will go the distance. I do, yep. I expect it to go the distance and Paulo win on points. Pinto predicts a territory victory and not surprisingly wouldn't be upset if he won by a knockout. Depends on the night. If you have to go through distance, I'm, uh, I'm quite uh, well prepared for that. If uh, knockouts come, of course, uh, uh, I will be happy to. While Mad Dog Miller lost his bout against Fennec, the Victorian is likely to be the toughest opponent Pinto has ever faced. If Pinto manages to account for him, the Territory will have its best chance yet of laying claim to a national champion. Well, some big name. Hello and welcome, I'm Dennis Driver. Tonight, the latest on Western Australia's phone scandal. A Territory boxer on the trail of an Australian title and the rise and fall of Bob, Bob Ansett. Well, next tonight to boxing. And the young man just one step away from a shot at the Australian lightweight title. On Friday night in Darwin, Paolo Pinto fights West Australian Tony Miller. The winner will get a crack at the Australian champ, Shane Knox. Paolo Pinto represents one of the Territory's best chances to take an Australian title. But it's not going to be easy, and the opportunity in front of Pinto hasn't come without a lot of hard work and personal tragedy. I caught up with Paolo as he put in some last minute training yesterday afternoon. At 26, Paolo Pinto has come to professional boxing at an age when a lot of boxers would be thinking of giving it away. After a distinguished career in amateur boxing in Portugal, where he achieved Olympic selection, Paolo turned pro three years ago. He's had six fights, one of which he lost to current champion Shane Knox. If he can beat Tony Mad Dog Miller on Friday night, he'll get the chance to take on Knox again. This time, better prepared. Kirk Blair pulled out at the last minute to fight Knox, and they offered it to uh, me if Paulo would take it, because I'd written to all the promoters in Australia, tell them what a good boy I've got, and I'll take fights at short um, any time, anywhere. And they uh, caught me on the hop, and I thought, God, we've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. I discussed it with him, and um, he was very reluctant about going with, without me, but I couldn't go. I was on crutches at the time. If he wasn't prepared for his only professional loss, this time he and trainer Bob Barber believe he's prepared for Miller. Although Miller won't be a pushover. His best punch in the eighth round stung Fennec into another flurry of telling blows. But both men stood toe-to-toe -to -toe right to the end, trading blows in the final round as if the fight had just begun. Miller is one of the few fighters to go the distance with Jeff Fennec, and, like Paolo, is anxious to fight Knox for the title. I feel great. I've been training hard for, and uh, I'm confident for the night, yeah. Uh, I've been doing a lot of preparation, like running, uh, punchy bag, and uh, all these things, yeah. He, he's a great thinker, he's got a great boxing brain. He doesn't mind getting hit. <laughs> it's going to be a big test for Paulo, obviously. Uh, he's only had six professional fights, but he's a, a fighter with a hell of a amount of talent. And uh, uh, Miller's a very experienced boy and uh, certainly will put Paulo to the test. But I think it'll be a great experience for him and uh, we're very confident that he can do well. There's strong motivation behind Paulo's bid to be champion. As well as the tragic death of his father, Paulo lost a brother. Back in Portugal, he has two younger brothers without family. He wants to win enough money to bring them to Australia. I got the young ones, uh, two young ones, and uh, uh, I think uh, I got more chance here to, to look after them because uh, I haven't got mum and dad. And uh, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. Paolo comes from a family that's seen more than its share of hardship. His team or his father met and married his Angolan mother after he rebelled against Portuguese colonial rule in East Timor and was imprisoned in Angola. He speaks proudly of his father, and a win on Friday night could be the end of a run of tragic luck. 
What do you think his uh, chances are of becoming the first uh, Australian champ to come from the Territory? I think his chances are excellent. He's a very talented boxer and uh, he's been getting better with every start. He's uh, disposed of his last two opponents very easily and uh, they're highly rated boxers from down south and uh, we don't think we've seen the best of Paulo Pinto yet. More bad luck to be honest. I think it's all behind us hopefully. Uh, I think those who wait get what they want and uh, he's been patient. We've had our ups and downs but uh, I've I've got a feeling we're going to make it. <laughs> How do you rate this fight? Is this going to be the toughest fight that you've had in your career so far? Uh, I consider my, all the fights uh, as, as tough, you know. Uh, I haven't got choice. Uh, so, uh, when you step in the ring, uh, so you have to fight hard. So I think all the fights, they are very hard. Uh, of course, if I win the fight, it's good for me. Uh, I will be close for, to fight the title. So it will be one fight. Uh, for the title, yeah. You've had some bad luck in recent times. Do you think all that's behind you now and, and your bad luck's over? And uh, they're, all, uh, they're all over and uh, uh, my mind uh, is, uh, is neutral of, of all those things and uh, uh, I hope uh, I'm doing well on the night. Yeah. They fight Friday night at the Nightcliff. Professional hey. scenes at Nightcliff last night. A near riot developing after local hero Paulo Pinto was king hit by Tony Mad Dog Miller after the bell to end round seven. Miller was immediately disqualified as an emotionally charged section of the crowd showered the ring with beer cans and chairs. Pinto looks cool and confident as he made his way into the ring. The reception for Miller was more hostile as the crowd left little doubt as to whose side they were on. The early rounds saw both men size each other up, with Pinto more than holding his own. At times, the fight looked more like a wrestling match. This one was declared a draw. There was a preview of things to come when both men boxed on after the bell to end round five, both receiving an official warning. By the seventh, Pinto was finding his mark, and when he threw Miller to the canvas, the mad dog almost went wild. Miller seemed rattled. His undoing came when he threw a punch too many after the bell to end round seven. <laughs> Referee Cole Mellon had no hesitation showing his official displeasure by immediately disqualifying Miller. The crowd, however, showed their feelings in a less official manner. Miller and trainer Keith Ellis must have felt like the loneliest men in the world. Police were heavily outnumbered. For a while it seemed a riot was just seconds away. Some form of order was restored when it was announced that Miller had been disqualified. Pinto appealed for calm. Then it was time to celebrate. It was a controversial end to a great fight, but referee Mellon said he was left with no option. I clearly heard the bell, I clearly saw the punch after the bell. Uh, it was a clear breach of the, uh, of the rules. Trainer Keith Ellis agreed the rules had been breached, but claims the wrong man had been disqualified. And Paulo is a great blade, but he hit him after the bell four times, and if you view the fight, he hit him after the bell again, and it was an honest, uh, impulsive reaction. Miller was taking it on the chin, but declared himself keen on a rematch. I'd like to find him again, whether it be in Darwin in, in front of a, you know, 800 screaming mad Portuguese, you know, I'd like to sort of get him over in West Australia in front of, you know, half a dozen mad lunatic Scotsmen. Alice says he'll appeal to boxing authorities to rule the fight a no contest. In the meantime, Pinto could be just one fight away from the Australian lightweight crown. Peter Adamson, 8 National News. And rain has prevented the Australian... Right. Professional light welterweight title. No true Territorian should miss this dynamic action-packed night with its profusion of top professional and amateur supporting bouts. Be there as the explosive Paulo Gunpowder Pinto gives it everything he's got for the chance of being the first Territorian to win an Australian professional boxing title. Marara Indoor Stadium, 8pm Friday the 10th of May. Real dynamite. Gunpowder Pinto shot at the Australian light welterweight boxing title. He's had to buy all his own equipment, but says it hasn't stopped him getting into peak condition for Friday night's title fight. At home today, Paolo Pinto was taking time out from training to look after the children, but his mind was constantly on Friday night's title fight. Yeah, I hope uh, 
uh, can get him early if he have to go to distance. Of course, uh, have to. I'm well prepared for that. Pinto has been training in Sydney under Jeff Fennick. He says that's made him better prepared than he was for the Tony Miller fight, which almost ended in a riot. There's only one setback to his title challenge, no sponsorship. Light welterweight champion Shane Ryan